This is Jen Gerson and Matt Gurney for this week's Align Podcast. Lots to talk about, including me thousands of kilometers away messaging Jen and being like, did your mayor just fuck up? And she goes, yep, yep. she sure did. Uh, we're also going to talk about the conservatives in the House doing things that I find annoying. And I've, I don't know why this occurred to me this week. Well, I, I guess I do. But I'm going to tell you in a few minutes what I think Justin Trudeau's worst moment as prime minister to date has been. It's probably not the one you th- you're thinking of uh, as well. Quick wrap up of some media news. All this and more in the latest episode of The Line Podcast. I, I'm very honest about the fact that for business and journalism reasons, I pay more attention to Alberta than I think the typical Laurentian out here. Um, you guys are an interesting province. Also, I, I just hear things through the grapevine from you, but I don't pretend to be a local, right? Like I got my own city and my own province story about. Headline this week pops up that the um, the mayor of Calgary, uh, uh, Jody Gondek, would uh, not be attending the menorah ceremony because she didn't want to show support for Israel. And I, I've been really busy the last few weeks, as I've been telling people, and I kind of had 0.47 seconds to think about this. And in that less than half a second, I was like, she's going to regret that. That is not going to go well for her. And then I woke up on Friday and you're like, I wrote a thing. Can you check it out? <laughs> it's a nice little column. Yeah. Would you like to read my nice little column? Your column on Friday in the line is the best thing you've written since the bags do not compl- contain plastic, you fucking muppets. Yeah, this I think this is the that, best uh, person column in a while. I think that uh, literally, I think I may have co-op compostable bag Jody Gondek, who is the mayor of my city. I live in Calgary. Yeah. Um. So just a quick ex- explanation of what happened here is that uh, every year for I think thirty three years, a local Jewish community organization has been doing a public menorah lighting ceremony at City Hall. The now whatever every civic group does something in the atrium of of Calgary City Hall there's you know and every city hall has this you know you've got the nativity lighting and the christmas tree lighting and the the, the what are the diwali and the ramadan thing and this is all very stock standard canadian pluralism 101 stuff right so they've been doing this for more than 30 years every calgary mayor has attended this in 30 years every calgary mayor through multiple wars in israel has attended this Um, But in our current moment, I think we're in a state of mass hysteria on Israel and Palestine here in Canada. And as a result, this has now become, well, this hadn't, well, this hadn't really become controversial. The only moment where this became controversial is that the mayor, Jody Gondek, got wind of one of the advertisements for this particular event. And in this utterly banal, completely anodyne advertisement, promising children's programs and arts and crafts and magic shows and latkes and soup you know uh, they it turns out that the jewish community organization had decided that the theme of this year's event was going to be unity supporting israel and jewish pride okay and outrageous how dare they how how dare a jewish community group put the words supporting israel two months after a horrific terrorist attack my god what a what a totally insane position. So Jody responds to this with a big long press release that she immediately puts on Twitter, followed by a tweet of the advertisement justifying her decision to abstain from this event. She was supposed to speak instead she decides to abstain from this event, saying that you know the Jewish community more or less blindsided her by making the focus of this event, one about supporting Israel in a time of war. And um, as a result, the, the the innocent civic intentions of the event had been irreparably tarnished with political intentions. I mean, I read that advertisement and thought it was the most banal thing running. And I think that she read a relatively insane thing into what was a really simple, straightforward advertisement. Uh, I didn't read in that advertisement that they had suddenly shifted course and decided to turn the public menorah ride lighting into some kind of pro-war rally. Like they're, they, they weren't putting like flood the tunnels, kill the Palestinians on that on that poster. Yeah, they weren't lobbing like <laughs> yeah. arrow missiles at they targets were, from I, Calgary I'm pretty, City Hall. I'm pretty sure they were just put pictures of latkes on there. Although I'm not sure exactly what pastries were prominently featured on the on the on the on the uh, 
poster. So I guarantee I think you she, they were delicious, though, whatever they were. Uh, they, they definitely were. But anyway, the Jewish point bakeries being, in Toronto? Ooh. Definitely. Anyway, the point the point being is that this had not, this, this was not some radical departure from previous Hanukkah ceremonies, all right? Um, and rather than do the sensible thing, like maybe quietly call up the the community association and say, oh, I have slight concerns about your, your poster. Can we talk about it? Can we make sure that this isn't going to become a pro rally, pro war yeah. rally? Or instead of saying, well, you know what? My conscience doesn't necessarily allow this, but I'm going to diplomatically and quietly and discreetly step back and find someone to take my place, which she also could have done. Oops, scheduling conflict or scheduling oops, conflict. I got a little I scratch COVID. in my throat. Yeah. There were lots of diplomatic ways she could have handled this if she had a genuine crisis yeah. of conscience. Including over. putting out any kind of statement being like, so sorry, I can't be there tonight, but happy Hanukkah to the, the thousands of Jews in Calgary tonight yeah. gathered with their families. My thoughts yeah. are with you in a difficult time. Absolutely. And I can't wait to see you next year. Absolutely. It's a one paragraph press statement that I literally just ad libbed live on the goddamn podcast. No, instead, Jody decides to put out this long press statement followed by multiple press um, uh, interviews explaining her moral and virtuous decision to not attend an event that said supporting Israel in the poster because the Jews tricked her. And um, hey, wait a well, minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, Toronto guy here not following that closely. What do you mean tricked? The The implication in her own press statement, if you read it, is that essentially the Jewish community had let her down and had tricked her into believing that this was some kind of neutral event and that the, the, the narrative had subsequently been radically changed into a pro-Israel supporting war rally. Was the poster new or had it been released already? Well, I think it was the first, she responded instantly when she first saw the report for the poster, but the Israel, the Jewish community said that they had actually released the poster last week. So those wily Jews put out a statement a week, a poster a week ago, yeah, and then conspired to make sure she did not see it until now with their my space lasers. Yes, yeah, something like that. Yeah, my my suspicion is that what happened is that sort of the <laughs> night before the um of the event itself, the community association put out a press release saying the theme for this year's event was unity, supporting Israel, and. And uh, um, uh, Jewish pride. And like, she probably only no cottoned on to it when she saw the press release and then freaked out. That's my suspicion about what happened here. So yeah. there's a couple things to break down in all of this. The first is that- May I make one preparatory comment? I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh. yield the floor to you, but I wanna say oh. one thing first. Yeah. Everything you have told me mm -hmm. is a political train wreck that is extremely foreseeable if yeah. you are a seasoned politician getting good advice. 100%. That is correct. That yep. So ends my commentary. Take the wheel. Hell, I'm willing to a seasoned pro political professional who has half decent communications advice. You is know she what I seasoned? Mean? Like, I don't I don't know her background. I don't know how. how when was the last she left? She's relative. I don't, when was she last? She replaced Nenshi. When did Nenshi leave? I can't remember. No, but I mean, what did she do before? Oh, off, off. No, I don't think she was a politician. Offhand, I forget. Offhand, I forget. I, I'll, I'll go look it up. You know what? You talk. Anyway. I'll Google. Okay. So a couple of points here. One is that for a Jewish community center to say that they're quote unquote supporting Israel after a major political attack is a pretty bog standard and relatively anodyne thing for them to theme a menorah lighting around. This is not, this is not, uh, as I said, this ain't flood the tunnels. This ain't uh, destroy the Palestinians. Not this is not, a JDAM. you're not signing a JDAM here. Um, it, it, you can quote unquote support Israel in this context and be opposed to the current Israeli government. You can support Israel in this context and be opposed to the war in Gaza. My suspicion is that most of the people who did attend the menorah lighting were generally pro um, a war in Gaza. Like they, they, they did see that as a necessary yeah. thing, but I hate to break it to you in a pluralistic society, people can have a range of views on this and it's a really hard, morally complicated conflict a range of views are actually acceptable here. So that's the first point. Um, second point is the number of people on my Twitter feed and obviously Gondek herself who had conflated a benign kid-friendly city hall menorah lighting ceremony into some kind of bloodthirsty 
pro-war rally in their heads was insane. Torches and nice synchronized yeah. triumph of the will marches. Right? Like it, it, with latkes. It, 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 to me, like, I'm sorry, but this is this, if you have elevated this event into some kind of bloodthirsty Jewish thing, yeah. you're, you're, you're putting your anti-Semitism on full display. I went to the event. There was a magic show for kids. There was a lot of fiddling. Okay. There was um, a lot of, uh, uh, there were some arts and crafts for the kids. And there were certainly some political speeches. Or all but the crafts, were, like F-16s and Merkava. Uh, well, you know, whatever. They were, yes, yeah, selling it, whatever. Also, there were people in my feed who, one of the things that was advertised in the poster was Israel bonds will be raffled. There were people who took that and said, oh my God, they're raffling off war bonds. Israel no. bonds are such a banal thing. They are, like I say, this is a guy with a background in local AM radio. One of the yeah. staple ads for radio stations in Toronto is Israel bonds. Yeah. No, these were two. There's... No, Matt, Matt, it's better. These were two one hundred dollar Israel bonds that had been donated to the community association to be raffled off at the event. They weren't war bonds, and they also weren't new. They had raffled off the Israel bonds in the in the year before as well. It was just it was a raffle. Okay, Israel for, bonds for have a perfect record of repayment. I'm hearing the freaking ads in my ear now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, like, like as I said. The, the, the actual reality of the event was so radically and disgustingly inflated in the minds of people who are deeply pro-Palestinian on this stuff to the to a degree that could not you couldn't avoid the anti-Semitism of, of, of the of the dis of disparity. And the blame for that lies almost solely on Gondek. Because if Gondek hadn't chosen to make a goddamn show out of her decision to abstain from this it wouldn't have been a story. Like, I'm sorry, it would have been a nothing burger. No, it was politicized by the fact that Gondek chose to abstain. And when she left, a lot of especially conservative politicians responded very predictably. One, Michelle Rempel, got on a flight from Ottawa that day to fly in and offer a speech instead. And the speeches were were probably much more political than they otherwise would have been if Gondek herself had just delivered them and lit the candle and did the nice community thing. Because, think, of course, she made it political by her decisions and also by the fact that she radically publicized her decisions. That, you see, I was about to say, I don't think her no-showing made it political. Because, like you said, if, if we, if mm -hmm. she had True. got a little itchy throat or, hey, family situation, but here's my statement honoring a happy Hanukkah to all, all mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. Jewish friends. It was the statement she put out about why she wouldn't be going. Yeah, she chose to make that into a firestorm. She chose to make a really nice, pretty, use, like uh, unifying community event that everyone could attend. No one, like, no, nobody, even somebody who was radically pro-Palestinian could not really have gone to that Hanukkah event and been offended. They might have been exposed to a different perspective on stuff, but they wouldn't have been offended. Well, you know that. Oh, there you go. Right? It, it was entirely within bounds, the entire event from start to finish. And in fact, the rabbi who started the event specifically said, this isn't a pro-war war rally. That's, this isn't meant to be a political rally. This is meant to be celebrating the, the return of light. Like, this is this is about peace. This is about love. This is about community. Like, this was- Hard to hear was, him over the Uzis he was firing. Well, the you know, I mean, admittedly, the IDF formation was a little much. Yeah. I'll give you that. The fly um, past was at a pretty low altitude. That's true. Uh, no, I mean, we're talking about this event that had two goddamn children's choirs, man. I know. We're surrounded by fucking idiots. Like I'm sorry. Anyway, okay, so so there's that. I get all into that into my column. Honestly, I can, you, if you read my column, you will get a better picture of my column than me speaking about it because I can read, I can write much better than I can speak. I don't have, I don't have your gift of the gap, Matt. You channel, you know what? I'll say this for your column. It was, and I, I've told you this privately. I want to say it on the podcast. Not only is it the best thing you've written in months, it made me feel better because Good. if you, like, if you hadn't lost your mind, I was going to have to, and mm -hmm. you're in a better position to do it locally than I am from two time zones away. Yeah. So anyway, I, I would just encourage you we'll read the column. You know, we'll, we'll put a link to it in the comments section. You can you can read it there. So anyway, the other point that I would just make, and this is the point where I didn't have I didn't want to get the column totally unrailed derailed by this point, but there are uns. But I do want to make this point in a dispatch, and that is there are unspoken rules in a pluralistic society, and the mayor shows up to all of the nice community events, 
is one of those unspoken roles. The mayor shows up to the menorah lighting. The mayor shows up to the Aid celebration. The mayor shows up to the Vali. The mayor shows up to the Christmas tree lighting. The mayor shows up to the Santa Claus parade. And the Santa Claus parade. And in our case, the, the, the Calgary parade. Like there's just, if you're a big city mayor, you have a list of cultural events you have to attend. And that's just part of your job. And part of the reason why that is your job is because when you're a mayor, your personal opinions about any of this shit don't matter. You're there to show up for your community and what you're communicating to your community when you show up is that regardless of your background or your religious faith or or whatever, you're first and foremost a Calgarian and I'm here to show up for you as a representative of the civic entity. Okay. Like you're, you're, you're set, you're setting a tone for, Hey, we may disagree, but first and foremost, we're Cal Can- Can- Canadians. First and foremost, we're Calvarians. And, and therefore, I'm going to, as a member of the state, as a civic representative, honor you for that. And when you allow your personal feelings and your personal hysterias to derail that fundamental duty, you fail a moral test here. And I would just say the best analogy that I can think of this, think of for this, is imagine for a moment that a Calgary mayor or a Toronto mayor had agreed to offer a nice little speech at the beginning of an opening at a mosque. And right before the opening of a mosque, a local mosque, say some crazy Islamic jihadist decides to go bomb a train in London, okay? And say for the, the local mosque puts out a statement about this saying, well, it's terrible that this, this, this uh, bombing happened, but we believe in supporting the Ummah, the collective brotherhood of Muslims sort of thing. And what if a what if a Canadian politician had decided to respond to that by saying uh, I'm public no by publicly pulling out of the event and issuing a big press release making a stink about it saying I'm not going to speak at your event because I don't want to be seen to be promoting Islamic terrorism like if a if a politician had done something like that we would take that person to the fucking woodshed and rightly that person would be totally correctly condemned for conflating local Muslims with terrorists, they'd be correctly condemned for not doing their fundamental duty to um, represent their civic, to, to represent their, their their civic municipality. They would be absolutely taken to the woodshed for that and correctly. And, and you and I would be part of the mob. Oh, and people 100%. won't give us that credit, but you and I would understand. Oh, and for exactly the same reasons, because this is a, this is a, 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 a civic leader's responsibility to to do this and this and this also the gets glue to the, that holds us together and prevents hold, us from cracking our skulls open and feasting on the goo inside exactly if if we don't if we don't get forward this idea of shared canadian identity and that everybody here is welcome in this beautiful melting pot or not melting pot mosaic that's part of the that's part of the invisible thing that ties us together as a as a polity and if you stop doing that that polity breaks and the thing that I want people to understand is that, yeah, if you're pro-Palestinian or you're Muslim and you're like cheering Jody on for not showing up to this menorah lighting ceremony, inevitably, she's not going to show up for you. Because once you start breaking those rules, those unspoken rules of pluralism. Or the next mayor won't. Or the next mayor won't. Or maybe mayor won't. maybe, yeah, maybe Gondek right. would. But what, if we if we lose the glue... We lose the glue. It doesn't. It's not like you can just cleave off one little section of the polity and, it's little, the and Jews leave it first, in the herd. Though. Well, it's always the Jews first, isn't it? But you can never, you can never cleave off one section of the polity without breaking the polity as a whole, the, breaking the concept of a polity as a whole. And like, like as I said, if if Jody stops showing up for the Jews, either her or a future mayor is going to stop showing up for the Muslims next. This is how it falls apart. And that's how we lose the glue. And that's why showing up matters even though like we all know that these events are like i don't know they're not that interesting but like showing up matters showing up matters when you're in that job it's literally part of your job i hate these events but we all hate these events i couldn't be mayor i don't want to be mayor i don't want to be showing up to a different cultural event every every week okay like i would find that personally exhausting one of my a guy i knew who was an mp once um showed me his calendar (laughs) it was nuts it, it like and it the the number of social commitments he was required as be, to do exactly what you said i showed up for the jews got to show up for the hindus yep. got to show up for the muslims yep. got to make it to the pancake breakfast at the church and it's like and he probably could have chosen to do none of these and never be elected again but having chosen to do one of them to do all of them had to do all of them 
And no, I would, I would say his calendar here. was insane. This is why I actually have a lot of sympathy for for politicians, even though we give them hell. Like I, I do it's recognize a it's a it's a hard job. Those people work hard, okay, and it's not a job that I would like or enjoy. And I would say, look, to give Jody credit, Jody, Jody some credit. If the poster or if the menorah lighting ceremony had suddenly turned into a not just support Israel, which is a benign statement that can mean a lot of things, but if they had decided to go like crush the Palestinians or like if it if the theme of this had become overtly dark, I think she probably would have been justified. The thing is that I think she was reading a very overtly dark sentiment into a relatively benign phrase that members of the Jewish community themselves didn't think would be a problem for obvious reasons, because Hanukkah is what it is and its history is what it is. And she just radically overreacted. And rather than saying, you know what, maybe I made a mistake here, I radically overreacted, sorry. She's chosen to publicize that mistake and double and triple down on it again and again and again. And in the process, she's eroding the concept of the social polity and the unspoken rules of pluralism by which we abide. You know, And that's why she deserved to be Howard Sird from space, which was the purpose of my column. Jewish space lasers. Under the command of Captain Jennifer Gerson. Um, well, look, I, I, I liked your column and people will know I liked your column because I used one of my favorite Star Trek gifts to share it on Twitter. It's when the Voyager hit the um, USS Equinox, which had gone rogue, renegade, mm -hmm. with two photon torpedoes and blew up its uh, warp nacelle. When I used that gif, you're serious that's serious i've been thinking all week about putting a menorah in my window and i haven't even put my christmas lights up yet i don't know if what? that would be religious appropriation like i don't know if that would be offensive into the jewish community instead but like, so i don't you haven't put your christmas lights up dude it's the eighth come on now we put our christmas lights up in november when it's still warm so well, that we don't have to put it up when it's snow. that's another kind of crazy i like look i'm I don't know if one should put up a religious symbol for a, a faith one is not a member of explicitly as a gigantic fuck you middle finger to a, like a series of idiots out there that might be offside with the purpose of it. But, you know, Alan Stratton wrote a great piece for us earlier in the week where he basically said it is 100 percent possible to be critical of Israel and totally. not fall into anti-Semitism. And yeah. he's he's bang on right, and I'm not going to repeat his column. I thought he I thought it was a fantastic column. I sent Alan a note. I said, "Great work." Um, well, in the same way that but, I can be critical of the Vatican for their like ch uh, child pedophilia scandal, while still not necessarily not putting up my Christmas tree and my nativity scene. All right. Yeah, you know what, Jen? The more basic point I was making it is so easy to be critical of Israel without being an anti semite. It's and yet, hard. and yet, so many people they hold them test have just fucking taken a face planting spill, yeah, for having failed to clear the lowest of conceivable ethical and moral bars, yeah. Like this thing is this high off the fucking floor. Oh, Net Netanyahu has given you endless, endless material, endless. It's like it's we're not water. even clearing a bar here we're clearing one of those things you put on the floor where the hardwood meets the carpet yeah and from politicians at every level to ivy league administrators right down to members like in our in our own social circles and broader professional community we cannot stop fucking this up and i am getting pissed off and yeah. Like, like I said before, Jen, if if Gondek or Chow in Toronto, who, by the way, showed up at the goddamn menorah lighting. And also, it wasn't a big deal. It was a small no. CBC story. They took the picture. They did a little thing. She right posed out. for photos and lit a she goddamn posed candle. For photos and she lit a candle. And that was that. The end. Enjoy your fucking latkes. Good job, Olivia. You did your fucking job, man. And I'm thinking about this stuff. And I'm thinking if Chow or Gondek or Plant in Montreal, who actually seems to have had a medical issue this week, and God bless her, I, ho I hope she's back on her feet soon. If any of these mayors didn't show up to break fast at the end of Ramadan, 
because of what Bashar al-Assad had done to some village near Aleppo. I would crucify that person, politically yep. speaking. Yep. Because you cannot start doing that in a society that is as multicultural as Canada without fucking it up. We 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 devolve into tribalism and our politics has no unifying theme values or course then. I don't That's, want and, and to go back that... to tribalism, even though my tribe is awfully big and I think yeah. we'd do fine. I would rather avoid that. That's not a that's not a that's not the best outcome. That's not the outcome we're building toward. Let's just put it that way. I prefer to avoid it for all of our sakes. And this I you know what I'm grumpy. Like it's the there's no way around that. Part of it is just needing a vacation, but also part of it is I understand life is complicated, Middle East especially, so I get it. Mm -hmm. But what what we have been fucking up lately has not been the hard stuff. We're fucking up the easy stuff. The menorah lighting in the city hall atrium, man. Eat a latka. Eat a fucking latka. Like, pose for the pictures. Light a candle. Do your job. Do your job. All right. Um, I, I think that that's like a little blurry. Like and subscribe to the fucking Like and line. subscribe to the fucking line. The last goddamn bastion of sanity in our polity left. Oh, and even and even and we're fraying at the seams here. <laughs> like and subscribe before like, <laughs> Matt loses it. Before totally. I lose it completely. <laughs> like and subscribe to the line. Currently the least goddamn insane part of Canadian society. That might actually be true now. God help us. All right. You wanted to talk about Polyev. Uh, I mean, I want to talk about it to the extent I want to talk about having a bad rash. Um, but look. So this week, we're, we should be getting close to the end of the parliamentary session. And the Conservatives decided to do some lightning round series of amendments uh, of to like uh, file like a quadrillion amendments just to slow everything down procedurally. And my question to the Conservatives everywhere is what the fuck? Because no one cares. No one's paying attention. Anyone who's paying attention is not an undecided voter. They either think it's amazing and they're going to vote for you, or they think it's a sign that you are an unserious prick and they're never going to vote for you. Absolutely nothing is accomplished by this, except it wasted time of not only of the people who are stuck in the room, but the people who had to cover it. And the people who had to cover it did not have the opportunity to go out and cover other shit that mattered, including mm. stuff that you and I are talking about here. When you're ahead by 19 points, you don't need to stunt. If you're stunting hmm. when you're ahead by 19 points, it's because you can't help yourself. Hmm. We desperately need a new government in Ottawa. For all of the reasons I could lay out for you, the liberals are way the fuck past their best before date, and they are not up to the task of navigating the world we live in today. And I cannot look at anyone who is likely or even potentially could replace Justin Trudeau as prime minister and have any confidence. This is not serious. This is not even attempting to be serious. This is a stunt when you are up by 19 points. When you're stunting when you're ahead by 19, you're stunting not because you need the attention. But you're the, like, at this point, the, the stunt is the point. You just like doing it. I cannot look at the state of the world today. I cannot look at the state of the country today. I cannot look at the state of everything except the line, and maybe even we're sliding, and think that what we need right now is a stunt. We desperately need an adult in the room. Do you see any? Coast to coast yes. to coast. It's it's literally just us. We are the we're the last adults left. And the funny thing is, we're. I am in adults. no shape to run this country right now. No, no, I'm not. I can't tell you how many times I was tweeting about getting how angry at Gondek and like credible, intelligent people were asking me to run for mayor. And I'm like, you no, know, I'd be bad at that job. I don't I like meeting people. I'm an introvert. I'm exhausted easily, and I have two young children. When you're grasping for me for leadership you've reached the bottom my friends you've reached i swear in copy 
I have 10 years of tweets that just make up their own oppo file against me. I have a million words in print. This is not my role in the ecosystem. My role in the ecosystem is to be an irresponsible shit poster, okay? And to launch howitzers at stupid politicians. I understand and accept my role. I I love my role. You are so desperate for, for political leadership that this is where you're going here. This is how you wind up with Trump or the chainsaw guy in Argentina. This is how you end up with Boris Johnson. Mm-hmm. Like the the bar is so low now. If the if the conservatives spent the last two years, uh, the next two years, or however long it takes, saying, "Are you tired of the bullshit? Here's what we're going to fix." Their 19 point lead would grow to a 35 point lead. Yeah, but you know what, Matt? That's the, the, it's the Laffer curve problem. You never know where on the Laffer curve you are, and the stunts work for them. But I don't think they're going to go up any more than they already are. Like they're they're nineteen ahead. They would win two hundred plus seats if the election were held today. So there's no there's no there's no necessary there's again I'm playing devil's advocate. There's no downside to continuing to do what works for them. At a certain point, you're not like. I know, I know you're right. No, you're right. I'm literally playing no, devil's no, advocate is. here. What? No, I get it. But yeah. this is a couple of years ago, my son's hockey team defeated like another team 19 to 1. Every goal after the third, I sweat blood, feeling terrible for that other team. An extremely Canadian response, man. At a certain no, I, point, I, I think, when you're I think up you're... by 19 and you're still stunting, you're doing it because you want to be an asshole or because you cannot help but be one. And yes, I don't we, need an well, asshole well, we, right we now. Know, I'll be know, the goddamn asshole. We know that Polyev is an asshole. And also, I'm not sure that asshole is not what the country wants. I think asshole is what the country country wants right now. Yeah, but you know what I want? I want an asshole who knows when he's been asshole enough and he needs to have another tool in the goddamn toolbox. I, I said, I'm not disagreeing with you at all. I'm not disagreeing with you at all. Um, the stunt is unnecessary. However, there is an impulse. Paris got, I think, an, an impulse where he's not going to win small. He's going to win everything. He, win. He, so he's, he wants so, to win was, 19 to 1. Yeah, so that means that he's not, he's never going to moderate his impulses. He's going to take it to the max every single time. I know. Because I, I think know. this is just baked into his personality. I know. No, I know. And I think, you know, and I think um, there's a, there's an interesting article to be written. I've kind of been toying with writing it for a while that something that partisans never understand is how every iteration of the partisan process is a response to the earlier part of that process. Mm-hmm. Like there are there are parts of the partisan evolution that unfold over multi elections, uh, multiple election cycles or over multi decades. A lot of the adaptation happens in real time. Pierre Polyev is the perfect and logical adaptation to Justin Trudeau. Oh, absolutely. Justin like, Trudeau created that man. Yeah. And whoever eventually defeats Prime Minister Polyev, should he be elected, will be a response to him. That'll be and, Mark Carney. <laughs> sure. I mean, like, it'll be like yeah. a perfect, yeah. Yeah. And and I and I, I get it, and I know what you mean, and I understand mm-hmm. why asshole is working with him, and asshole's the point. Um... Max Fawcett of the National Observer observed this week. I thought I thought it was well put. Petulance is the point. I would I wouldn't have used the word petulance, but he's right. Like I think he and I looked at this, we 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 reached the same conclusion. But also, I live in a country. An asshole do ain't you, gonna run it. Do you though? Do you live in a country, Matt? Does Legally and technically, anymore? yes. All right. Now, I think currently I I live in a fog of my own ill feeling, mm-hmm. but beyond the radius of my mood fog, there is a, a, a globally recognized geopolitical entity known as Canada. And Canada has problems. Some of them- We are... should refer to Canada as a globally recognized geopolitical entity known as Canada. I think that should actually be our beyond, name now. And then bracket beyond Matt's mood fog uh, and bracket. Sure. I mean, that's um, a little solipsistic, but that's fine. Yeah, that's okay. Well, it's my podcast. It's, and yours, sorry. Well, there you go. That's what I'm saying. Like, podcast. I get, I, 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 thank you. Thank you uh, for that. Um, 
I, yeah, I have just, nothing to I have nothing to add to that particular point because I don't desis- I don't necessarily disagree. I, I I can I can empathize with the mentality and the and the psychology that gets him there. Um, I would love. I would love him to be the adult in the room. I'm just not sure that that's actually going to win him right now. He like right now, I think that honestly he's doing well in the polls because he's giving Canadians exactly what they want. I think he's doing well in the polls because the liberals are, are collapsing. I actually don't credit the conservatives with this. And I think the conservatives are making a strategic mistake. If they think they're winning hearts and minds, I think they're in the right place at the right time. Uh, both. I think both are true. With one, I think yeah, there's, 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 there's an interesting um, counter argument, counterfactual argument is that how well would Aaron O'Toole be doing right now if it were Aaron O'Toole and not Pierre? Would they be 19 points ahead? No, but I think he'd be winning. I think he'd be winning too. No, I, so, like, I, I don't I don't disagree with you, Jen. Part of that 19 point lead, some percentage of it is asshole because Canadians are fed up and Pierre Polyev is the anti-Trudeau. Well, and, and it's, and and it's yeah, exactly. It. And it's not even just that the Trudeau is the, the Trudeau brand and the liberals are collapsing. It's that in the process of in the same way that like when a star collapses in on itself it creates a new entity like that's that's kind of what's happening here he's 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 mirroring the collapse of one star and 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 like i said i think that he's winning because he is giving canadians what they want i think they want an asshole right now and I, that, that won't always be the case that won't always be the case they're not always going to want an asshole but people are crazy and angry right now and they want someone who's going well, to mirror and reflect that crazy and angry back what you just said there about the star collapsing in itself i i thought of a thought of gravitational singularity destroying everything in its radius and it made me smile <laughs> there has to be some i know there's some astronomical large astronomical term for what i'm describing but like this is like there's a life there's a whole thing that happens when stars collapse and we're talking about stellar things. formation um stellar formations anyway, but i mean they into collapse it, into but... a black hole or singularity if they have sufficient mass or if they just mm-hmm. cool off eventually into a brown dwarf i think but but Brown dwarf is a term that could get us in trouble if people are not cl- clear on the Particularly astronomical. with Prime Minister uh, Blackface. Mm. Anyway. So, speaking of which. Someone... We're going to talk about the media because, unfortunately, that's unavoidable. Well, I know... we are, but i got one more item on the list. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Okay. It's all right. All right. Like and subscribe to the line. Yeah, like and subscribe to the line. Um, December. Even though my Christmas lights aren't up. And it is end of year think piece time. And these are things that uh, radio shows, television programs, and written publications, newspapers or digital, start to stockpile at this time of the year because writers and editors are going to be off over the holidays, blah, 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 blah. Someone asked me a few weeks ago if I thought Trudeau was going to take a walk in the snow in December. And if he did, would I be uh, able to write some sort of look back on the Trudeau years for uh, for a, a large Canadian publication. And my response was, I don't think he's going to do that. If he does, email me and I'll write you something. Mm-hmm. And uh, they said, cool, 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 cool. What would you want to say? And I said, I don't know yet. Let me think about that. I'm going to totally blow my own thesis here on the podcast. You know why? Okay. Just why? fuck it. <laughs> You're in a mood. I love it. There was um, a report this out this week. I haven't even read it yet. I just saw the headlines. I read some of the coverage about it. But it's a StatCan report looking at uh, sexual misconduct and sexual violence within the ranks of the Canadian Armed Forces. I'm not going to recap okay. all the recent history of this. We all know it's a problem, and we all know the government's working on it, or at least is going through the motions of working on it. Uh, apparently, pretty much it, everything you need to know is summed up in the title. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's I think that's right, and it's uh, getting worse. I suspect some of that reflects a destigmatization and a greater willingness to report Mm -hmm. as opposed to it becoming a more rapey institution. But Mm -hmm. I don't want to downplay the fact that the military, as much as any other part of our society right now, including at least one of the line editors, is frazzled and frayed. And this could produce a a social behavior. So I got a pretty open mind to this. But my mind, I think because I was already thinking of the Trudeau stuff, and I saw that story. You know how, like, I've, I've tried to explain this to people before who say, oh, I don't know how you columnists are always coming up with ideas. I've tried to describe the process as just constantly inputting information into your brain. And every once in a while, a couple of things, two or more, sort of just going. Yes. And then you have to get it out. 
Yeah. It's it's like it's it's compulsive. So like that's why some columnists are like, what the recent Arby's commercial tells us about land development rights in Central <laughs> America, right? Like it's <laughs> things that are culturally relevant will combine in your head in a weird way. Because mm-hmm. everybody like everybody gets bored eventually. Even even the columnists who do like the City Hall beat or the Parliament Hill beat, they all get bored of doing the Today in the House, the Prime Minister said, like, the, the, the workaday process columns are important. They really are, as are the news stories. But the real fun of being a columnist, well, what you did today was fun. But the other fun is when you grab a couple of things that are out there in the zeitgeist and you pull together a genuinely new thesis. And I have been thinking about the end of the Trudeau Prime Ministership, and I don't don't expect it anytime soon. And I'm still not convinced the conservatives aren't going to find a way to asshole themselves into fucking up and letting him pull off some kind of comfort behind victory. But if there is going to be an end and there, no, I mean, there will be eventually Justin Trudeau will not be prime minister forever. And I began thinking about his legacy. And what I was thinking about was what you referenced a minute ago when I referred what some stars turn into and they turn into brown dwarfs. And you had talked about blackface, brown face. That is probably going to be whether he likes it or not, and I know a lot of people who like him are going to be pissed off at this because they're going to say it should be climate change or childcare or something. I think all of us saw, splashed across the pages of that magazine, what Justin Trudeau's political legacy is going to be. It's blackface. Mm -hmm. And that could be, we can talk about whether or not that's fair, but I think that's just going to be what he's going to be known for. I think Trucker Convoy is going to be up there too. You know what should be? And do you want to know something he completely skated on? And I think it's a, I think it's a raging injustice. I've been, I think the third item in my head that sort of clumped into this little gravitational thing has been something that you've talked about, that we've talked about, and that others writing under the lines banner have talked about, which has been a shocking degree of hypocrisy by some feminists and progressives or feminist and progressive organizations and institutions when it came to the sexual violence of the Hamas attack on October 7th directed against Israeli women. I think mm-hmm. these are the three things that kind of went clump in my mind. What Justin Trudeau should go down for was when his office had been warned that the commander of the Canadian Armed Forces had a sexual misconduct complaint against him, and they didn't do anything about it. Mm-hmm. And this is years ago. This is no one in the country except me is thinking about this anymore. And I hadn't thought about it in a long time either. It was just the weird confluence of stories over the last week that I think brought this all together. But I want to recap it. uh, And I want to give an immediate shout out to uh, Amanda Connolly and Mercedes Stevenson at Global News, because they're the ones who drove this story. Mm -hmm. When uh, the former chief of the defense staff, the senior most officer in the Canadian Armed Forces, retired a few years ago, General Jonathan Vance. He retired. He's an Army general, four stars. He retired. And then Global began to report that prior to his retirement, there had been sexual misconduct allegations made against the general going back for years, specifically involving one individual a female member of the Canadian Armed Forces, it's subordinate in rank to Vance. Mm -hmm. And what we eventually discovered, well, we discovered a few things. First of all, we discovered that the woman had gone to the Armed Forces Ombudsperson, a position that exists so that members of the Armed Forces can safely report issues of workplace safety or misconduct, even if the person responsible is superior to them in the chain of command. Hard thing to do in the military to report the guy you work for and who can order you into battle to die. Mm -hmm. We designed a civilian process outside the armed forces military chain of command to allow that sort of problem to be addressed. And this woman went there. This was reported up the chain of command to the minister of national defense. The minister of national defense alerted the prime minister's office. The prime minister's office handed it over to the privy council and it died. And there have been reasons offered about why it died, uh, couldn't get enough evidence, the uh, procedures weren't in place to uh, permit a full investigation, the witness didn't want to go forward further, things like that. Like, we've referred lots of different versions of this. 
But I was thinking about a column I wrote years ago. Katie Telford, then and now the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, had testified uh, before Parliament because she was called to, to do so about this issue. And she had acknowledged under questioning that more should have been done. And I remember at the time being really angry about that because even strip away all the particular baggage this government has, you know, very loud, loud and proud touting its, its feminist credentials. Any government should have a duty of care to a woman asking for help through the proper channels. And the fact that any government, it may be particularly galling on this one again, because of its credentials and self-image, but the fact that any government left a woman in the Canadian Armed Forces to continue serving under a man who had been exploiting her should have destroyed a government. Not because it's a juicy political scandal. It's actually kind of a complicated political scandal. You got to understand the nuances of the military hierarchy and the chain of command. You got to understand the role of the ombudsperson. You have to know how the ombudsperson interfaces with national defense, which interfaces with PMO, which interfaces with the Privy Council. So it's not that I expect the Canadian people to have much understanding about any of this stuff. It's the fact that a woman asked for help from her feminist government and didn't get it. So, I, I don't really know why this came up this week, but if there was any justice in the world, and I, by the, just so the listeners know, I'm under no illusions that there is any justice in the world, but if there was, it won't be blackface that gets mentioned in paragraph one of the first article that gets published after Justin Trudeau either takes a walk in the snow or is defeated. It'll be this. I'm going to make this vow now. I don't know when Trudeau is going to leave office, but when he does, my article about it, I just gave you all the first paragraph of my fucking article. So not to disagree with you or to undermine what you're discussing at all, because I, I do think that that was pretty indicative of one of the failures of this government over time. But if you want to ask me what was the mo what was the thing that Trudeau should have gone down for, hmm. it was the SNC scandal. one. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. And to me, that was actually the moment when the Trudeau brand irreparably cracked. Mm. They've been unable to to essentially what what power they were able to um, keep after that scandal have have been the result of desperate vote efficiency ploys and tactics. So being very effective politicians, effective politicians, high use of wedge techniques, high use of divisive tactics, and and being very very good at what is called vote efficiency. So hyper-targeting the hundred people and the 11 writings that you need to win. Yep. You can you can maintain a thin majority and a very fragile majority, obviously as we've seen for the last two elections using vote efficiency, but he's completely been able, unable to rebuild the brand or regain a, a plurality's trust after that. Not plurality is the wrong word, wrong word but he, there's something that fundamentally cracked about Chester Trudeau and his brand and the entire party after the SNC scandal that I don't think they've ever fully fixed. Um, that's what I think they should have gone down for, but I'm I not saying that you're wrong. Oh, no, no, I, you know, I, I, I think you're right. I mean, I think the double whammy of, I think, SNC combined, combined with blackface. Well, I it's not thought, that it should. No, I, I, I mean, the I thought they were the same damn scandal. I just think they hit yeah, differently. They hit differently. I, I said, this is not, this is, this is, it revealed the hypocrisy of the party for yeah. what it was. Yeah. And also it, it it revealed that, you know, all of the old liberal affectations for scandal and vote buying were still very much in place, despite the fact that these were new players. Um, and it, to me, also the feminist credentials were absolutely shot to shit when you had um, Philpott and Raybould, Jody Bosom Raybould, basically bail out of the out of the caucus. Like I said, I don't think they've ever been able to build up their gross moral credibility after that. Um, I don't think they were ever able to fully repair their brand after that. And I think ever since, ever since then, it's been a fairly desperate clinging. There's been a deep, desperate clinging sensation ever since then. And the fa fact that they managed to win the last two elections, win, I'm putting that in quotes because they were only minorities. Okay. And thin They're the government. Yep. Yeah. But their ability to quote unquote win the last two elections was the result of the darkest art of politics and nothing more. Matt, Quick let's talk there, about folks. media. Yeah, let's talk Sure. Like yeah, I realize the, the media. Like, media is such a tricky thing because it, we do spend too much time talking about it because we're in the media. Or navel gazing. 
my navel casey navel casey you misspelled that in our last dispatch yeah. which we did on purpose and uh we put we oh, yeah. put we put yeah. usually put typos in our dispatches sure. just so that our most eagle-eyed readers yeah. can spot them for them so 100%. if you do spot if you do spot this this week's typo please make sure to uh post it in our comment section yeah be very public prize. and you'll get the prize yeah thank you yeah. um so there's a couple things going on in media simultaneously that's worth noting. CBC announced that it's going to lay off like 600 people and 10% of its workforce. Uh, CBC president Catherine Tate did an interview on its own channel and Adrian Arsenault took it to the woodshed it. and it was funny. Yeah. Um, I should have I have, should have used the Voyager torpedoing the Equinox gift for that interview too. Uh, yeah, definitely. What was the next one? Uh, CTV. CTV is oh. having a bit of a week. CTV is having a bit of a week. What do we want to start with here? I just want to cry. So what do you want to start with? Um, let's start with CBC. Sure. So the CBC has announced that essentially it has to lay off 10% of its staff as a result of internal machinations around their revenue and uh, revenue and expenses, whatever. They're not making as much money as they need to make. There is an internal question about whether or not these layoffs are being timed conveniently. No, and remember from last week, we have the Google deal, the hundred million dollars the CBC wants to take a chunk out of. Well, we all, well, I mean, yes, we also had the government going, well, maybe the CBC won't get a big chunk because they know it looks yeah. bad optically. And the next thing yeah. you know, the CBC is announcing 600 job cuts. Plus, to be to be clear, a trading 200 positions. A question I have, uh, the, the 200 positions that are unfilled would just be wiped out. 600 actual jobs would be lost. One thing do I'm we, not clear do we actually on, know what the breakdown of those things like because I've heard a lot yes, of comments. I know I've read that so it's okay. it's 200 unfilled positions that will not be filled that's uh of the 600 remaining it's a roughly equal split between uh CBC and Radio Canada and um there will be funding cuts as well landing relatively equally but somewhat more lopsidedly on the English side what I don't know and I was about to Which ask this you is this coming out of scripted TV well, I was about to ask that. I don't know right? how many journalism positions will be affected right. or if this is going to disrupt entertainment fun uh, entertainment or other content That's right. sports. That's right. I don't know. Right. Okay. So th that's an important thing to know. So thing that I would just point out is that the fundamental issue with the CBC, and I, I am fairly firmly committed to this position, is not necessarily that they're underfunded. The problem with the CBC is that they're over mandated, Right. They try to do radically too much. They spread themselves way too thin for the amount of money they have coming in. This is an organization that has absolutely dealt with mandate creep. They take on more and more things from like CBC gym to streaming services to another news section to another written television section. They don't know how to prioritize internally. And because of that, I think the only way to save the CBC is honestly going to be a government mandate review. Oh, um, in which... I, I've made this point many, many times before. The CBC needs to absolutely get out of entertainment. It needs to understand that its core mandate is journalistic. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see in statute, for example, like every single city over 100,000 people gets a, a CBC, CBC newsroom. newsroom or at least a CBC body. I'd put it down um, to 10,000. We've written this in our dispatch. The yeah, CBC, written, yeah. CBC News can be the only thing that saves journalism in this country, which I don't like. I think it's but a problem. But I think it's going to beat the alternative. But it, but it, anytime. but it can't, but it can't save journalism in its current format. Like you no. need to radically reform it. No, and in um, fact, it could make it worse. And it could make it worse in its current format. So yes, this is this is the fundamental problem. I actually think that what CBC needs to do is they need to start with a zero-based budgeting exercise. They need to define their mandate really clearly, broadly, and build their funding needs up from that mandate. Right now, what they're doing is the exact opposite. They have a really vague van mandate that's more or less squished into the Broadcasting Act. They, they got a big budget line, and they're trying to figure out what they can do with it. Yeah, yeah and they, they're constantly expanding their mandate with the funding that they have, and as a result, they're just spreading themselves way too thin. If you just double the CBC's funding right now, that doesn't solve the CBC's problem. You need to fix the mandate first, and then if you need to double its funding to uh, ad adhere to that mandate, then you have an argument for doing so. But right now, more funding doesn't make sense for the CBC. It's 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 money into a pit at this point. And the other thing that I'm saying is that one of the evidences of that is the way that so far we can see they're cutting their, their workforce. Radio Canada is probably one of the most popular and high trust aspects of the CBC. Yeah. Unless all of those cuts are coming from scripted television and entertainment and maybe sports, 
This is a CDC that doesn't know how to prioritize and can't prioritize in, in its current incarnation. This is a major problem. And I think that this is also replicated in the fact or, or evidenced in the fact that you see Ka um, Catherine Tate. We've made this point before. I I'm just beating a dead horse here. She's bad at the public part of the job. I can't speak yeah. to how she is at the at the private part of the job because I'm she not. She might be a fantastic CDC. internal she administrator. Might, she might be a fantastic internal administrator, but every time she does an interview, she's fucking terrible. Sorry, I'm swearing too much, but she's terrible. It's a, it's, she, it's she's, a sweary kind of day. She's absolutely tone deaf. She falls into every political trap running, and then she especially does these interviews with her own employees, which, by the way, is putting her employees in a terrible situation. It's an awful thing to do to your employees to expect them to interview you. And then is like taken utterly aback when these employees try to subject her to even the minimal amount of criticism. In this case, God bless Adrian Arsenault. She starts going after Tate for like, well, so wait a minute, you're cutting 10% of the workforce. And what about your personal bonuses? And she had no answer because of course she clearly wasn't expecting an actual question from Adrian Arsenault, like fundamentally misunderstanding the nature of her own employees and the work that her, that her organization does. You and is meant feel to my do. life essence ebbing out of me. I'm sorry, if you want to save the CBC, you need a mandate review. It needs to be government structured. You need to put you need to create a CBC Act in which a lot of this stuff is then put in statute and you need a new goddamn president. But we're not gonna get that because mayors don't show up to light goddamn candles because the leader of the opposition's filing a billion motions because the PMO was too busy to help the lady getting sexually exploited by her boss. And there was an uppity cabinet minister who disagreed with the prime like it's i'm getting really tired of my job being should we do the obvious thing yeah you think you think you think being the person who just says look this problem is pretty simple and there's an obvious sort of fix for it maybe we should fix the the obvious problem with the simple solution like we're not geniuses here matt we're not that smart Oh no, there ain't much left of me cognitively these yeah, days. Yeah, like like I'm sorry, like between the two of us, we're we're like ordinarily intelligent people. Okay. Tops. Tops. And we have no pretensions to be anything else. Okay. We're just flax. And anyway, CTV. What happened so to CTV? I wanna go home. What happened uh, to CTV? CTV, well, CTV's having kind of a moment on a couple of fronts. Um, okay. Let's go. Because I I had CTV written down twice in my notes, and now I can't read the first one. Well, the first one was yours, so I'm going to need you to do that one. Um, but the the problem they've had locally here in Toronto is that on a on a new noontime broadcast yesterday, they went full gun deck, and uh, the story was menorah lighting. And they, uh, while the, the anchor in the studio and the reporter in the field were d -d 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 gabbing back and forth, they were rolling what we would call either B-roll or a package. Uh, and you and I are not on the TV side of the biz, but we, we know what this is. A package is pre-prepared video of happy Jewish children singing songs, of lacquers being grilled, of a menorah being Again, this lit. Is the exact same thing, of, package that you would expect from Ramadan or Iftar yeah, or a local community yeah, it's a, story. But it's anyway. a rabbi giving a blessing. Like, mm -hmm. things from previous events and you put it together so that when the anchor and the reporter are jaw-jawing at each other, there's something interesting and dynamic on the TV screen. And the package that ran instead were scenes of bombing and combat from the current war in mm -hmm. Gaza. Now I want to, I'm going to put my better angel first. What's left of him. Okay. There is a way. And again, I'm not a TV professional, but I have, God knows I've been in the studios often enough doing hits or commentaries or whatever. I can tell you a way this could have been accidental. You have in the system You've got your two B-roll clips ready to go. Attached two packages to of B-roll clips. One of them is Hanukkah. One of them is Israel. Yep. And an editor, tired and harried and as grumpy as I am, clicks on Israel instead of Hanukkah when they're talking about lighting the menorah. Human error. Could have happened. Could have Possibly. happened. Yeah, absolutely. Do I believe that? No. No, you think it's sabotage. I think it was sabotage. Yep. And I'm just looking forward to seeing the retaliatory sabotage when some benign Iftar fest festival is overlaid with B-roll for the latest... Angel uh, Pearl getting decapitated. 
Yeah, exactly. Or the latest uh, response from the terrorist attack of uh, some bombing in Pakistan. Like, really CT- looking forward to that. Because if we're going to start demonizing entire people on their religious holidays, let's not stop there. That's that's going to lead us to fantastic places, CTV. I, th- I think like kind of the meta theme for me um, throughout this podcast has been, well, first of all, primal scream therapy, but layered with a why can't we get the easy stuff right? Mm-hmm. And... run the right package i mean also oh see oh then there was a uh, omar's uh, omar show Sakadina's. the right video there was o- omar sakadina i believe uh on ctv basically calling like a benign israel rally a pro-war rally yeah okay cool 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 i'm just saying like just so you know when you start polarizing along these lines and start to uh eliminate the sort of general rules that align your polity together that doesn't go one way because if you want to nope. start de- demonizing the Jews, guess who gets demonized next? All of us, because it all falls apart. Correct. And then, right, and then we're right back to will to power, brute st- strength, right, right, make uh, might makes right. Like okay. and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Enjoy the last of your like liberal button. democracy. The other, um, the other thing, the the last thing on the CTV file. And this is more just an observation by me. Okay, this this is literally what I have: CTV argument agart gon gonola gon. That's great, Jen. Argument against. Yeah, I agree. I endorse that. Um, the right the now. other thing, the other thing they've been doing is I've noticed they've had particularly tone deaf tweets. Um, mm, okay. where a, a passive voice will kill media accounts. Um, there was an example a few weeks ago where uh, a woman who's Canadian, uh, uh, had been living in Israel, peace activist, but it was Canadian uh, by nationality, was confirmed to have been killed in the October 7th attacks. Mm-hmm, for some mm-hmm. time, it had been believed she was held hostage, but forensic examiners were able to eventually confirm one of the body parts they had was hers. Mm-hmm. So she, she'd been dead all along. And there's been a series of cases like that. And CTV declared it to the world as like, well, I, I'm, I, I'm sorry, I forget the woman's name, but it was whatever her name is, has died. Yeah. Like peacefully, quietly in her sleep at the age of 91, sur- surrounded by her grandchildren after a heroic battle with cancer. No, she was murdered in a terror attack. It's like November 23rd, 1963 splashed across the front of the wall street journal or the new york times or the washington post john f kennedy dies ships at pearl harbor sink well at least they're no longer a denying... challenger retired from service suddenly matt at least at least they're no longer denying that you know the rapes the mass rapes by hamas happened we're just not supposed to mention it because it's because it's a dehumanizing trope it's, that makes it, hamas look bad did you, I, I don't, this is not on our list of things to talk about. We've been gabbing long enough already, but did you mm-hmm. notice actually this week, the um, there's been a turn in that series of news reports have come out from mm-hmm. organizations that had, up till now it had little to say. Some international organizations, including the, uh, the UN's Women Committee have mm-hmm. come out. I don't know if the shame finally overcame them or if Israel maybe quietly perhaps might have arranged a briefing or two showing some of the footage I've looked at or worse. Because apparently on the rape and sexual violence stuff, my understanding is that they have worse footage than they showed in the briefing mm-hmm. uh, for because the families did not want that footage released. And I can understand that. So that's 100 percent speculation on my part. I'm not trying to lead anyone to any conclusions. No, no, I, I, but I, I thought I it was interesting at all, because I don't think, I don't think these, these people wouldn't have watched that, that video anyway. They would have refused to do it. Um, yeah. I, I, so I don't think that's the case. I, I just think that literally so much evidence started to be compiled and demonstrated that it became undeniable and people needed to do fall into um, spin control. Yeah. And so that's why you've seen the pivot. It, it hasn't been, now it's no longer denying this is happening. And now now they're just saying it's problematic, it's problematic to talk about why it's that it happened. Like I said, because it makes Hamas look bad. And Hamas, old, uh... are, and, and Hamas are, are, as we know, um, moral crusaders in the... Uh, righteous cause of defeating uh, Israeli Israel, not the Jews, Israel, and menorahs everywhere, and menorahs everywhere, which we all know are actually symbols of mass ethnic cleansing. 
like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Cool. Anything else? All right. Else? I think that's it. I think that's everything on the list. I can't read this other thing I had from CTV at all. So I'm good. A friend of mine who's a lawyer once showed me his pretrial notes because they had the opening uh the opening motion the next day. And literally the like he had stayed up really late working on this because it was kind of like it was a it was a fast moving case. Literally the only thing either of us could make out from his handwritten opening statement was thank you, Your Honor, and members of the jury. We just had to like completely wing it the whole time. That's great. That's great. Um, okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Um uh, a final do, word. Can you do you think do you think you have it in you to do another uh podcast before Christmas, or are you just gonna fall over? Oh no, no, no. When when I feel this way, I am better than ever able Fantastic. to podcast okay then let's look, let's we'll see you next this, week look this stuff holiday. either gets put on the internet or it stays in here which oh, one no, i'd much rather better. out on the internet i'm also going to let you defend me on twitter this today because i'm i can't i can't spend all day arguing don't with want, no i will cause you more problems than i will solve oh will you okay fair enough so let's just not fair go enough. on twitter today let's just not go on twitter today i'm not doing it i can't i can't fight with anti-semites all day on twitter i can't fight constantly with people who are who can't tell the difference between a local city hall uh, menorah lighting and a bloodthirsty pro-war rally i i the newest tool of ethnic cleansing jen yeah i mean like lacus. yeah lacus. uh yeah no I, I i can't if you're if you're there you're already so far gone you don't even see it anymore it would it would be so easier to stomach this bullshit if they were trying to act like it wasn't exactly what it is. But they but but look, Matt You wrote it months ago. The masks are off. But Matt, if the, the issue is that they won't even acknowledge that it's anti-Semitism and they will say that you're calling it anti-Semitism is proof of the Jewish conspiracy to shut them down about an ongoing genocide. What is one of the problems we have as human beings living together in a society, which perhaps actually is a bad idea, and perhaps we should all just kind of fan out. Um, but no one thinks they're the bad guy. And I was talking just this week with an old, old friend of mine. We've recently reconnected and we're touching base on things we remember, seeing what we remember the same, what we remember differently. And one of the, one of the truisms we, we both agreed on is that everybody is the main character in their own life story. Mm -hmm. And are we the bad guys? Are we the baddies, Matt? I am like, like, look, we're just getting back to what last week's podcast was right. Like, um, However strongly I feel about these people, I do understand intellectually they feel exactly the same way about me. Oh yeah, fair enough. I accept that. Hundred percent. I, I I can't go, can't go around the world going, "You're an asshole," and "You're an asshole," and "You're an asshole," but then get precious when someone goes, "Actually, I think you're an asshole." It's like, "How dare you? Don't you know I'm a nice guy?" <laughs> like it does, it doesn't work that way. So, the masks are off. Yeah, people are just revealing exactly what they actually think. You and I at and least how they think. Yeah, you said before, 10 years of tweets and a million written words. Our masks, we, we don't have masks. There's no mask. Like, we, we, are, we are who we are. You get what you get. I, I, do uh, think, I do think that there's a disingenuous effort by people who disagree with us to reframe our positions and to try and build well, bogeymans around us. What else is new? But to some extent that's that has almost become self defeating because that just interests people in us and when they start to start to examine what we're saying we find that we don't fit the bogeyman and then we get fans right like that's that's kind of the 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 dynamic from what i can see every attack against either you or i or the line collectively over the last few months has generated another $1000 in recurring annual revenue wow we should keep that up it's a great business model it it is the shittiest way to hit our annual targets there. Like I told you this a few weeks ago, right? Like I just want to write the Business Council of Canada today came up with a really interesting report. That like that's all I ever aspired to professionally. Instead, I have to go out there and take hits for saying I don't think we should genocide Jews. I don't think we should genocide Palestinians either. And I also don't think what Edgy. Israel doing is and I also don't Edgy. think Oh, courting <laughs> controversy. I also I also don't think that what Israel is doing, well, some of it may constitute recklessness or even criminal recklessness or war crimes and therefore meets the standard of being genocide so i don't know where you want to put me on that one like and subscribe like and subscribe did you have any lacas i didn't even get a laka. i was going with the kids the kids were keeping me 
it's so hard to do these things with kids. I it's know. impossible. Anyway. Do you want to order some lacas in and then just expense it to the line? Like, do you? Yes, I'll order some lacas in and expense it to the line. I might do the same. Okay. Lacas, they're lacas. delicious. Really good. All right, like and subscribe.